Hi campers, it's Miss Yaz from Camp Quarantine and Tiny Cupboard Creatives. And today we are going to be uh, reading a story about an American artist. Um, her name is Georgia O'Keefe and I've got a lesson on her. So if you've, ha you've done it already, I hope you had lots of fun. And if you haven't done it already, I hope you do have lots of fun. All right, let's get going. So this is a story called Georgia O'Keefe. There we go. Little Georgia grew up with six brothers and sisters on a farm near Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. But while they played games, Georgia preferred to look at the world around her. So let's have a look here. So there are her brothers and sisters running after the chickens and playing in the hay. And here's Georgia looking at flowers and snails, things around her. At school, Georgia was always more inspired by the colours she saw through the classroom window than the numbers written on the blackboard. So here are her friends paying attention to the teacher. And here is Georgia daydreaming about the colours outside. Do you sometimes daydream? I do. <laughs> Ready? And when Georgia was 12, she told her mother she wanted to be an artist. She started lessons and her drawings became the most impressive in the class. So all of her friends are looking at her and she is just painting. So she knew she wanted to be an artist for when she was 12 years old. Georgia moved, oh, sorry. Georgia moved to Chicago and then New York to keep studying art but everyone in the city was busy. They didn't have time to notice beauty in little things around them. Little things like a flower. So there's the flower, there's Georgia. Look at all the black and white here. I think they're trying to tell us that everyone was just a bit too stressed or a bit too boring or too busy to be looking at flowers on, on the street. So she decided to paint that tiny flower by putting her nose very close to it. So she got the flower, she put it really close to her face. Suddenly, the tiniest flower became the most enormous painting. No one could ignore its beauty. And look at all the paint on her face. Maybe you could try put a flower close to your face and see even if it's a small flower, how big it gets when you put it really close to your face. A famous photographer called Alfred saw Georgia's paintings and wanted to share her work with the world. He put together an exhibition of her art. So a photographer is somebody that takes photos. So she met a photographer and he loved her work. Georgia's paintings left the public wide-eyed in amazement. They couldn't work out what they were looking at. So look at all these big eyes and they're all like, hmm, what is that about? But Alfred understood her paintings. He was an artist too. Soon they realized they were made for each other and they got married. So here they are. He's taking photos. That was what a camera used to look like. Taking photos of Georgia. Here they are together. I think they got married. Here they are together. That looks like a swimming pool. Here's Georgia painting. Cute. Inspired by New York, Georgia decided to paint towering skyscrapers as only a child would have painted them. For her, the city was made of enormous squares. And here's her studio and she's painting the city, which is made up of squares and rectangles, so simple shapes. Mm. Look at that, that's interesting. And when summer came, Georgia visited New Mexico. She immediately fell in love with the desert. She painted crosses and sand dunes and even the skulls of dead animals. They were all fascinating to her. So she basically drew everything that she saw, guys, around her. The landscapes, the things, 
skulls and pa uh, flowers and mountains. She loved every stone, every bone, and every colour of the lonely desert. She painted every day for years in a house nestled between red hills. Nothing was too small or too ordinary for her. She's pretty happy, doesn't she? Nice. Through her art, Georgia flew all around the world to different museums. They called her the mother of American modernism. So she's not really flying. It's probably just how she felt when she was painting. She became very famous in America. I guess all over the world, hey? We're teaching about her in Australia. And today you can see how the ordinary becomes extraordinary when you take the time to look at it as little Georgia did. So Georgia, saw things in everyday life and she thought they were beautiful. Um, and I feel like I would like to do more of that. What do you find beautiful at home or in the park? And in these books, they're so good. It's got actually got a timeline of George's life in the back. The end.